No, I don't waste no time How are you doing guys and welcome to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is joshua daniel george a social media marketer and online coach and i got this question in the facebook group uh, the lifestyle design community for those of you that um, are interested in social media marketing interested in starting your own agency and want to know how to get started i have a free beginner course in there that literally teaches you you know how to reach out to clients how to get clients how to uh, get the results and so on and so forth so feel free to check that out it's in the free facebook group link is in the description box down below or on my youtube channel on my channel header if you click on that link um, it will basically take you to the same place but anyway in the free lifestyle design community i got the question what to do if you can't get sales for your e-com clients so of course within social media marketing you've got lead generation and you've also got e-commerce and then this question is related to e-commerce so what to do if you can't get purchases for this e-com client now quick mention because i've already read a few of the comments below that um, of people just you know trying to give information you know, i understand it is with the best of intentions um but just try not to comment if you don't know the entire picture which is obviously you know my all, uh, first answer basically is understand the flow from start to finish if you are not getting sales what is it is it that the website's not converting is that there's something on the website that is just not enticing enough is it the advertisement is it the audience is it the copy is it the image and so on and so forth you need to understand where in the flow you are going wrong okay and you need to also understand the entire buyer's journey so first of all when you place an advertisement obviously you set up that campaign within facebook you tell facebook what audience you want to target you show facebook you know the copy that you want to use you import the image that you want to use and then facebook basically runs that campaign then the people that are targeted within that campaign, they will see your advertisements and then they can basically do two things, right? They can ignore the campaign or they can engage with the campaign. And what I mean by engaging, I mean either clicking on it, reading the comments, reading the copy or clicking through to the website. Now for the percentage that click through to the website, the metric that we use to analyze that and to basically see what is going on is the outbound click. So in your Facebook ad account, on the right hand side, when you see columns, by default, this will be set up as performance. Okay, so those are the performance metrics within your ads manager. You can actually change that to something that is more, you know, uh, relevant to your client. So what I like to do is I like to include outbound clicks, the amount of outbound clicks, the cost per outbound click, and also the outbound click through rate. Because you wanna know the percentage of people that see our ads how many click through to the website if that is less than one percent or the metric that we use or the the kpi that we use for that is 1.5 percent so if it's less than 1.5 percent that means that so in the case of one percent for every hundred people that see your ad less than one person actually clicks through then we know okay it's an issue on the front end we need to make sure that our ads are more enticing how do we do that we either have better performing images, we choose a different audience or higher converting copy, okay? So those are the three variables that you can look at to improve the outbound click-through rate. Now, the percentage of people that do actually click through of, on your advertisements to the website, they can do a few things. They can view content, they can add to cart, they can initiate checkouts, and they can purchase. Best case scenario is, of course, if they do all of it. So if they click on the if they click on the product, it will fire the view content event. Then once they are happy with that product and they want to purchase it, the next step, the next intention is to add to cart. Once they've got it in their cart, they can initiate the checkout, and then once they've added their payment info and clicked on confirm you know, the purchase event will fire. And only then, once that purchase event has fired, have you gotten a sale. But prior to that, like I said, you know, there's, there's content views, there's add to cars, there's initiate checkouts. So just because you haven't gotten a purchase, which is the last part of that flow, doesn't mean that, you know, the entire campaign is a waste of time or the entire campaign does not convert. So like I said, on the front end, it could be that the outbound click through rate, the percentage of people that see your advertisements and click through to the website is too low. So on the front end, you're losing a lot of people. The drop off is on an ad level. The next step is the view content. So if you notice that, for example, 
a thousand people click on your advertisement, but of those thousand people, only a hundred view content, which is obviously you know a ninety percent drop off rate, then you know okay. The view content fires on the product page, which means that the home page is not enticing enough. Maybe the button to view the products is below the fold. Maybe the loading speed of the website is, you know, it's too slow. You know, it's, it's really, really low. So people that are waiting for the website to load get impatient and they leave the website. So they never actually view the products. Then you know it's something on that home page that you need to change that, you know, it's not enticing enough for that person to actually click on the products. Or it could be that on the front end, on the advertisement level, you've said something that is not true on the homepage. So maybe you say on your um, advertisements, up to 80% uh, discounts or flash sale, 50% off free shipping or something like that. So they click on your advertisement with the intention of getting that discount or taking you up on that offer. Then when it gets to the homepage, it says something different. So the discount is not the same. Maybe there isn't free shipping. Maybe the free shipping was only in particular countries, etc. So they feel that they've been lied to and then they leave the website from there. So make sure that everything is congruent in that flow from left to right or from top to bottom, depends on where you look at your funnel. Okay. The next step is view content to add to cart. What is the percentage of people that view content and actually continue with that add to cart? So how many people are dropping off there? How many people are viewing the product but not adding to cart? That's what you need to find out. Once you know that metric and if you think it's low, you can start to look at your view content page, so your sales page for that particular product and seeing what can you do to optimize that part of the flow. And I understand as digital marketers or social media marketers, this is outside of our sort of, you know, core responsibilities because we are running the ads. So we're not actually doing anything on the website. But if the website converts better, your ads will perform better as well. So you do need to take a full stack approach with this because at the end of the day, that business owner is gonna look at your ads. And yes, you might have a high outbound click-through rate, but if you're not getting sales, if you're not getting a return on investment, then they are not going to continue paying you and you'll basically lose the client. So then check the sales page of that product. Where is the add to cart button? What color is the add to cart button? What is, um, the discount code, you know, if there's a discount code, what is the, the price and so on and so forth. Check on that page what it is that you could improve. Another quick tip as well, if you have that discount code bar where you can add a discount code on that view content page and you get a high drop off, it could also be that people see that bar where they can fill in a discount code, go back to the website and try and find that discount code, don't find it, and then just leave the website or abandon the website from there. So that's just a quick mention to remove that discount code bar um, on that view content page. But anyway, from there, do the same thing again with the checkout page and with the, um, you know, basically the, the last part with the add the payments info page. Go through the steps and figure out where the drop off is. Once you've figured out where the drop off is, what can you do to improve it? So in your ads manager, when you can customize the columns, the columns should basically be, of course, you've got the amount spent, the views, the impressions, etc. You know, you can leave that as is. Outbound clicks, view content, add to cart, initiate checkout, and then purchase. Check all of those metrics, check how many people, how many unique clicks you get, and how many unique ads of carts you're getting. See where the drop-off is, what you can also do if you're really unsure about what a high converting store is or what a good conversion rate is, is just Google, um, you know, for example, uh, e-com conversion rates or something like that. And let's say the percentage of people that um, should view content or should add to cost after viewing content is 20%, for example, and yours is on 7% or 8%, then you know, okay, there's something on that page that I need to improve, okay? And then from there, like I said, analyze it and start making changes and tweaking the flow and seeing how that improves your drop-off rate. So, you know, the drop-off rate becomes less and how it improves your flow, okay? So take an analytical approach to, you know, the data. Don't just assume that, oh, you know, because we're not getting conversions, I need to set up new ads, I need to change up the images, I need to change something in the flow, because it might actually be that your ads are performing really, really well, but something on the rest of the flow, so on the sales page, on the checkout page, on the car page, needs to change in order for, you know, the people to basically go through and, uh, you know, basically complete the funnel. 
kind of thing, okay? So that is just my quick tip for today is to analyze the data from an analytical approach and don't just jump to conclusions. Know your numbers and know the metrics and in the ads manager, you can actually customize the columns to uh, basically meet you know what you want to see and to set up the metrics in such a way that you can have a good overview of what is happening you can also do this in the analytics tab um, so if you go to analytics of that particular ad account you can actually select the events that you want to view and then you'll basically get like a little funnel as well from left to right so feel free to check that out anyway that is it for today's video hope you enjoyed it hope you got something out of it uh, short and sweet so like i said i hope this was jam-packed with value for you guys hope this was a little golden nugget to start off your week like this video if you got something out of it comment down below what you'd like to see for my channel next subscribe to the channel for more and i'll see you all in the next video